Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today, this video is going to be a little bit different, but at the same time, it's not. It's, it's a reaction video, but it's a reaction to a movie review that I've actually seen this movie already. So, um, while this is going on, I'm going to get my own takes on this movie. So this movie, this video is Saw X spoiler review, post credit scene, plus sequel theories. Um, so I've seen this movie. I wouldn't watch it over on release night. So, like a week ago from the day this came out. And the day this came out, I'm actually going to see, um, crap, now I'm blanking on the movie. Tomorrow, tomorrow night, the night of the mo the, 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 day, the, 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 the day this video comes out, I'm going to see The Exorcist Believer, the night this comes, the day this comes out. So, yeah. It's going to be a fun movie. Great movie. Terrifying. It looks terrifying as shit, but it's. I think it's gonna be a great movie. So we're gonna get into this because, and I will give my my opinion while this movie is going on. Okay. Hello, my fellow Jigsaw princesses out there. Saw X has now been mm. released in yes. theaters, and with the tenth film in the franchise okay. officially being released, it is time for us to go into full spoilers on the movie. And that's exactly oh yeah, spoiler I'm warning if you haven't seen this yet. Over all the details of Saw X, telling you my The traps in this movie, the traps in this movie are pretty good. Post credit scene is good. <laughs> yeah, I do want that Billy thing. So. I'm very satisfied. I'm very satisfied with this. I'm very, very satisfied with this movie. But okay, diving straight into it here, just reiterating my thoughts, I walked away really liking this movie. My mm -hmm. enthusiasm for the Saw franchise was at an all-time low with the past three movies, yeah. and this one just saved it. It not only turned out being a really fun <laughs> Saw movie, but it was also just a great story. Having it focused great on story. John Kramer and his personal vendetta to get back at these scammers for stealing money and tricking all these people that they can cure their cancer was such a satisfying revenge plot to go through. The traps in here were also very bloody, gross. I mean, okay. I've watched the whole Saw franchise over and over. This is the first time in a while where I was actually going, oh my God, God. This movie had a lot of gore. Lots of gore. So, long ago. so diving into specifics on the movie, starting off from the very beginning, it starts off kind of slow. It does. Really this movie does start off, this movie does start off very slow. And this movie starts off very slow, like he's saying. It takes a while for anything to even really happen in the movie, um, which not not a bad thing, but it it's very slow, um, and like he's saying, the whole beginning is based on just, just John Kramer, no jigsaw, no traps, no kills. Like the very beginning is very very tame for a Saw movie, which is very which was different, which was different. That was kind of refreshing. Although through flashbacks was very refreshing. Other Saw sequels, we got to see a lot of John's personal life. This felt yes. really calming, really chilling. You are feeling that John Kramer is dying. And although I've seen some yeah. people criticize the beginning for being a little slow, like I just feel like it was. So I really like the beginning of this movie. This world with it. Because although John Kramer is the villain of the series and this twisted psychopath putting people in these traps, the way they made us care about him and go. <laughs> And like, I knew the plot of the movie. I knew what was <laughs> yeah. going to happen. And they were even fooling me. When John goes to Mexico, <laughs> I feel bad for the people that haven't seen any Saw movies before. Diagnosis, to how yeah. they're going to cure him, all the stuff involved with it. I'm like, they might actually do it here. I got, they and that's the crazy thing. Like, I'm sitting there in the theater. I'm like, I know in where this movie takes place in the timeline-wise for the Saw movies... And I'm still sitting here like, wait, his cancer got cured one time and it came back? Like, very, very good. Very good plot twist. I know he's already mentioned scamming, and it'll get into that, I assume. Um, but yeah, very, very good, like, build-up to the reveal of the fact that, like, he still had cancer and they didn't operate on him. And that'll come up, yes, and that is a spoiler. Um, but yeah, it was very like, not it wasn't what I was expecting. 
I do it here, guys? I believe me. A huge red flag for John should have been when he got to Mexico and was hauled away by guys in masks. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what yeah. to do that, John. But like, even seeing and even that, it was it seemed weird at the time. To even to me, it was like there. So he got taken to this place and then got kidnapped to get taken to where the surgery happens, and then I made me think about what she had said like 10 minutes earlier the the lady i now i can't think of her name but it made me think about what she had said about 10 minutes earlier where the f like us uh not usda the uh, wow i'm really blanking now the the health people are after her because she is curing cancer and basically taking money from them because people are going to her getting cured and then don't have cancer anymore and don't have to pay for chemo treatments and don't have to pay for all this and so it, then it made a little and then i was like you know what that actually makes sense that they have to kidnap because then it doesn't it seems more realistic like they're actually running and hiding An old man john kramer be taken away into a van you're kind of like oh don't hurt the man <laughs> yeah fragile. but it was really some great emotional especially the there, especially an old man with john cancer but yeah Yeah. Like a tear come out of his eye. The sunlight hit oh. the moments in here where they were filming John Kramer like he was advertising some type of <laughs> medicine on TV. You know what I'm talking about? Where they look all happy or we're sick. Oh, <laughs> happy luck. Like they were filming shots like that with John Kramer going. Full and like you see him in the park, John Kramer looks so happy, fine, dude. Be fine. He's drawing up his next trap. Yeah. He crumbles up that trap and throws it away. And the movie implying that if He's they like, actually cured him and if this Oh cured, yeah. He was going to give up the chick. I don't think he would have given up personally even if they did cure him because he was still wronged and his son was still taken from him prematurely and he's got to repay people for their wrongdoings still in his in his opinion he still has to do that. So I don't think he would have stopped but I think he would have been more, I think he would have been more decisive and he would have he wouldn't be killing as many people it would it would have been more i don't want to say selective because that sounds like a selective club because that sounds wrong but it really would have just been more selective on who he chooses to put into traps he saw life like he found the appreciation for his own life and was like i don't want to torture people anymore i want to be a nice little old man that <laughs> had to hit you in the feels going oh dog craver was about to give it all up and be a good i don't think he would have such a nice added touch they threw in there but when he's taking the bottle of Finding the tape which and just replayed some fake surgery from a yeah they actually never even performed on him that was crazy i don't think i think him going i don't think he would have taken the bandage off if they smashed the computer and made it look like he had had his surgery already um and basically got it to where he wouldn't see like that video um but once again, just a, that's just a personal opinion. Um, so I think he's he. I don't think the plot of this movie would happen if they just broke the monitor. Um, and I think if everything was broken, if the computer was broken too, I think John would have believed it more because he would have because they had already told him they are having to move locations every few every week or two, and so I think it. If everything was smashed up and like no trace of it was left behind, I think it would have been more believable to John. Where he takes off the bandages and he has no scars. There was something yeah. so refreshing about seeing John Kramer, the villain, the bad guy, who was this ultimate mastermind and this planned out he turned. life get weak, get vulnerable, get taken advantage of, and you Jeez. see his anger. But now, before moving forward with more details in the movie, let's talk about the traps of Sonic. Oh, okay, yes, so the traps trap the very were very, the very good. I was kind of surprised the route they took with it and this trap i wish was real this trap was so freaking like gory and psychotic but at the same time it was such a good looking trap i don't think it would have been a fun trap to see if it to come to fruition but once again the dude turned his ways because he saw john kramer standing there 
so he put the things he was stealing back, and so yes. However, if he didn't put the things back, I think this trap would be real. I would have been pissed if it were not for the content. So the first trap we get kind of early on in the movie, as most Saw movies, they kind of open up with a trap, but this one they opened up with John Kramer first. He's in the hospital okay, after mm -hmm. treatment where he went to... That's exactly what happens. ...steal from a patient on his deathbed, maybe taking his watch, his wallet, and then uh -huh. jump into the eyeball trap, which has been like the biggest marketing focus uh -huh. on the poster, they released the clip, everybody's like... I wish this trap was down. real! ...break all five of his fingers, or else this vacuum is gonna suck out his eyeballs. And you see the entire trap play out, and it was pretty gruesome. I just and then it those fingers break cuts off. back but to by it. The time the trap is over and those eyeballs get sucked into the vacuum, we cut back to the hospital and it was all in John Kramer's imagination. He was envisioned Which is the cr which is the crazy thing, the fact that he just again, envisioned that, that trap. But all the stuff back and he goes back to work and John's like chores. I know people being pissed that yeah. it's a dream sequence. I wish this I was a real trap. I really wish this was a trap. But that is a very good that is a very good thing. This janitor was an insignificant player in the movie. The one other time they did this in the Saw franchise is when Jill Tuck went to bed and she was afraid that Hoffman was after her. Yeah. And then we get this like horrible death scene of a major character and it was all a fake out. That pissed me off. Here it worked just fine. I also feel like something like that was needed because the first chunk of the movie is just a lot of talking. There's a lot of development and dialogue and there's going to be people who pay for this movie going a lot of yapping, not enough yeah. yapping, so I didn't mind. <laughs> then we get to the pipe bomb trap, Very much. which is the driver who drove John Kramer to Mexico City scammers, being a part of it. He's the first yes. victim, and I like the way this played out. Not only is it a really and he played this. Did he play the surgeon to too? Yes, like, he played the. He wrist, played the. He played the. He was the driver that drove John to the spot where he got kidnapped um, from the airport in Mexico City, and then he performed the surgery on John Kramer. So John Kramer told him he the bombs are like a cancer. You have to cut the bombs out from your skin, which is this trap. You got to cut them off and it was bloody gruesome. Nasty, it was a this was a very very bloody trap. Survived, and that's what's been missing yes. in a lot of saw movies. I like when someone can survive their trap. People don't survive often in saw movies anymore. Do and get out of it. It was even funny seeing John Kramer walk out with his little medical equipment. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very cool. Yes, which is very, very good. Valentina's trap was crazy. Also, give me a second. I will be right back. Okay, and I'm back. I might have another cut, though, in a second. But if I do, it'll... You guys won't know how much time has passed. It'll just be like, boom, boom for y'all, so... So let's get back into this. This trap was very good. The Valentina trap was very, very good. This trap had me, my eyes glued to the screen. He's saying he was looking away. I was staring down this trap because this trap was one of the most gruesome traps I've ever seen in a Saw movie. This girl, he'll probably say it, had to cut her own leg off and then pull bone marrow out of her femur. And she's the issue with it was she just wasted too much time whether she debating whether she wanted to cut her leg off to pull bone marrow out. The the meter was like very, very close to passing the amount to free her. And but she just didn't do it fast enough. She waited too long. She debated her life, which he'll probably talk about, so Yes. I don't know what the razor was, razor wire was called, but they gave it a name. Artery bone marrow. It was. It looked white on it being pulled out. Yes. They very, very much are. They do. Once those traps start happening, you kind of then root for the victim. You're like, oh, I hope you make it out. 
I hope you go. You went through all this pain, all this trouble. I hope you survive. Yes. And there was a part of me that was pissed off that she was gonna live if she just had like five extra more seconds. But Not even five. I think like a second or two, and she would have survived. That was grotesque, though. Then we move on to Mateo's brain surgery. Mateo's brain surgery trap was crazy. <laughs> Mateo's trap was crazy. No, this one was crazy. He had this, and this is the one that's seen on the trailer where it rolls out. He has to cut part of his skull open and pull brain matter out for it to dissolve in this little jar to fill up a meter or whatever to free his brain from just electrocuting and burning like basically his skull gets incinerated you can see right here and right here are where the flames come out when this mask closes on his face and just incinerates him from the inside it was not it wasn't the it was probably one of the more boring kills in the movie because you don't really see anything you don't see him suffering you don't see him dying because he's literally strapped to this wheelchair so you don't see him struggling or anything but it was a very good trap nonetheless yes yes Yeah. I was getting a little pissed. I was like, John, they went through all that. I think you can hit the pause button on the timer and let them be. Or at least add nah. 30 seconds to the clock. By nah. Let's, let's be a little he bit told him how much time he had. Not the most memorable trap. They wasted time. The that made us the most sad. Because while the other characters you maybe did or didn't want to root for, I think a lot of us were feeling for the Gabriella character. And even Amanda was feeling for her. Which was yeah. Like but Gabriella is chained up from her arm and her leg. Gabriella's trap was crazy. She had to break her hand and her feet. You fall. Yeah. Maybe. No, start with your leg. That way she can still be hanging in the air, which works against No. And then the other thing that sucked about but I also trap. think the trap would have... I think Kramer is smart enough to where if she broke her hand first, the machine would have pointed down at her on the floor to get her on the floor too. No matter where she went, I think the machine was following her. So, it's a lose-lose situation. No matter which one she did first, I think the radiation machine would have still followed her. Yeah. Dr. Cecilia, the, the oh, girl's name. So Gabriella survived the trap as well. But she ended up dying because Dr. Cecilia didn't want to give her the chance to go live. Kramer, John Kramer is literally sitting there like, we need to get her in the car and get her to the hospital so she can get treatment. She won her game. And Dr. Cecilia goes, she doesn't need to survive. And still proceeds to stomp on her neck and kill her right there on the spot which is crazy to me but yeah she should have won she has survived and it's even more effed up in the movie because it's like you see John's pain and anger that Cecilia acts off Gabriella and you yeah and the fact that Kramer gets upset about the fact that Gabriella dies is also, like, crazy, too. Kramer is the one that tries to kill these people for doing him wrong. And when they survive, he's like, okay, you live now. Like, you don't deserve to die in my hands or in, like, my, like, near me. And Dr. Cecilia just walks up and stops, snaps her neck in half and just kills her on the spot. And Kramer's, like, actually upset by it, which is very uncharacteristic of him totally believe john is like sad about it he's like we need to get her to a hospital she exactly she deserves to live and you're on his side and everything but 
from like, dude, John is the guy who put her in there. How is this movie so well thought out that even though the man who put her in the trap is now the person we're siding with, like, yeah, get her out of there, take her to the hospital, he's right. You put her in there, dude. Really <laughs> exactly, the but I yes. Felt that way in so long. Thank you, Mike. The last two traps of this movie I'm gonna talk about in a sec. I want to get to talk about. Oh some yeah, of okay, okay. Characters here like Amanda. I didn't know how much they were gonna include Amanda in Saw X. I was happy to see Sean. I was glad to see Amanda. I felt like there was something interesting they did with her in Saw One and Two, where she was a victim of Jigsaw, went through her trials, ended mm -hmm. up getting rehabilitated. Which is her face. What Jigsaw's logic is you appreciate your life, and then you can join the Jigsaw Apprentice School of Learning. And so yeah. the way the movie goes about using Amanda, amazing. It was a great oh, twist X to see Amanda. It was very, very cool to see Amanda. It was a very big plot twist. I was not expecting, I was not expecting Amanda to appear. Yes. Amanda changed like crazy. Amanda, by the time... She... That is, that is another thing. She changed a lot between this movie and Saw 3. I, so it's during Saw... I guess across the course of Saw 2 she changes because this movie takes place before Saw 2. But... Amanda goes from, you know, being someone that's, like, really caring. Like, in this movie, she's really caring about Gabriella. She doesn't want, she wants Gabriella's trap to be last so that there, you know, if she wins, because her trap was honestly kind of easy. Um, so, like, she's like, Gabriella needs to go last. So, like, if she, and I guess her thought process was, if she wins, we can take her to the hospital and she'll be okay, which is crazy to think about. But that's besides the point. But then by the time she gets to Saw 3, she does, she makes unwinnable traps. She wants people dead. She doesn't want people to change their ways. If you were wrong one time, she, she thinks you deserve death. And that's her in Saw 3. And yes, like he said, Hoffman framed her. Yes, that was one trap, though. Like he said, one trap. She still makes unwinnable games. So something had to have happened between this movie and Saw 3, like he is talking about here. She made me love Amanda again and only made me dislike Saw 3 a little bit more. Because it's like, <laughs> they just ruined the potential with Amanda. She should have been the true apprentice to carry it on. As much as I like Hoffman, Gordon, and all that, yes. Amanda was always the apprentice. That should have actually have been the one to take up the mantle of Jigsaw. The other supporting character I want to dive into is Dr. Cecilia. Dr. Cecilia was they psychotic. And this girl is honestly super smart. Taking all the money, and you get to see her nice big hat. And for a good half of the movie, you truly did believe her for a sec. Like I said, she seemed so convincing in the beginning that she was actually going to cure John Kramer. That even myself, knowing the plot of the movie, I was falling for her lies. But once the mask comes off and she finds herself in the trap, girl is ruthless. First, yes. after Valentina passes away and she sees that they've taken her phone in this tape oh, right yeah. in front of her, she doesn't hesitate. Yes, yeah, she, she is psychotic. She cuts open Valentina after she's been killed, okay? So Valentina gets her head cut off, and then they turn away, and 
It's her, her, she's still, there's three of them still alive at this point. Oh, I think three. Yeah, there was three. Her, um, Rosentina, or, right? No, Gabriella. Why did I say Rosentina? Gabriella, and then one guy. And he, she cuts open um, Rosentina, right? Now I'm blanking on names. Well, pulls out the intestine, pulls the card to her, and calls. Makes a call, which, crazy. The whole scene where they grab the organ off this <laughs> character that they were just rooting for yes. to live and use her intestines to grab the cell phone from the wheel yes. and pull it towards them. I love that. It was sick and disgusting, but it felt like... Very, very disgusting. Many of us probably wouldn't have thought about to do, but Dr. Cecilia, a mastermind good opponent for Jigsaw, was like... I'm doing this. I'm getting that phone. And maybe that's a little bit of plot hole because, like, Jigsaw was counting on her to do something that sick to get that phone in. Yeah. It plays a part into the ending reveal. Very, it. very much. Like, Jigsaw, could you really have thought she was going to end up doing that? Like, Jigsaw planned everything. Kramer has a plan for everything, dude. Don't ever doubt John Kramer. He, if... Even if you don't think he has a plan, he has a plan, and he will perform that plan. He, he won't stop until he performs that plan. So. Like, come on now, but whatever. Hopefully I don't know if he knew she was going to take her phone. Yes. Parker Sears, who is her husband, boyfriend? The upper hand. When this happened, I really thought Jigsaw was like stuck. I didn't know what was gonna happen. Him and Amanda were both stuck in traps. Like, I didn't know what was gonna happen. Like, I well, I knew this wasn't the last movie in the series timeline wise, so I knew they survived, but I didn't know how they were gonna survive. I didn't expect what happened to happen. Yes. Own traps like Dr. Cecilia won, but I'm like, this is a prequel. John is still alive for a couple of movies. Yeah. Where does he get out? But that turned out to be the twist of the movie. John and Amanda had always planned to make it look like they got the upper hand on them, and they knew that they would want some sort of twist or revenge by putting them in their own trap, which is why John set up the final trap to involve two people, Amanda and John, who are going to be drowned by buckets of red cranberry juice. <laughs> Very much so, which, now that thinking about it after he said that, it makes a lot more sense why there was two spots for it. He was going to take him and trap him in the other side of Dr. Cecilia's trap. Um, and then once they free her, once he gets her out, that is when Amanda tells him, she's going to burn you too. Um, so, very, very good Plot, get very good wording from the characters there and very good foreshadowing so and very good retrospection in the John movie met up with a little boy named Carlos at yes the facility, helped him out, fixed his bike, exactly a, old man learned a very specific Spanish word that would become important no hala, Carlos. No hala. What him? <laughs> don't pull how is he going to tell Carlos to win then huh <laughs> biblioteca, Carlos. and this <laughs> Carlos and Brent in, in the and oh what I was so afraid the movie would ruin it right oh, like, oh. thing for all these sickos or maybe sometimes innocent adults to be put in jigsaw traps to have a kid kid is crazy plan, and especially level. one that that's didn't do it especially one that didn't do anything yes yeah, so when the exactly. And Jigsaw's taking in all the liquid, then Carlos is feeling bad for Jigsaw. And he pulls. Like, oh, let me have some of that. And he's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I couldn't believe the movie was doing it. I, I like, didn't know what was going to happen to Carlos. I low for Saw, and I kind of like it. It was like <laughs> an emotional, sentimental thing. The music on this was crazy. He's willing to end his life to help this old man who he has no yes. idea the bad kind of guy he is. It also even worked in John's favor in making him look like a better person. 
And he pulls it back, yeah. It was so crazy, dude. But of course, Jigsaw planned for this scenario. Exactly. Once the characters go up into the hideout room to get the money bag. It was all part of John's and it was and the trapped in the gas and... chamber where only one of them can stick their head out for survival. Yes. Making Dr. Cecilia the winner of the game. Having John and Amanda walk away with this bag of money and John hands it off to Carlos. Saying, yeah. yeah. Hey, you and your family and this beautiful oh, yes. The ending was so good, dude. Jigsaw looks like a hero and such a good person. Come on now. This movie is so good. I've been the one for the past week saying, stop with the apprentice. Stop with the people helping Jigsaw. I'm so glad Amanda was in this movie. I want to say Carlos has the potential to be an apprentice. Oh my god, dude. I don't think Carlos is, will happens. be an apprentice. I'll talk about that in my theories for where they could go next in a sec. But let's get to the post credit scene of the movie. So yeah. as the credits are rolling and we're waiting for the post credit scene, in uh -huh. my mind, I was shaking my head going, well, what about that guy who was part of the support group with Jigsaw who was dying, had the scar on his belly, and told him yeah. about the operation? He seemed like such a sweet, innocent guy. Was he actually part of it, too, or did they actually cure him? What, what was going on? I and think he the was... The credit scene is dealt with is kind of that loose end. Yeah. Having Oh. And a cameo from Hoffman, Hoffman himself. Yeah. You know how good it felt to be in a theater with Saw fans that once Hoffman faces showed up, it granted claps in the room. Woo. I'm not kidding. Tell me if it yeah. happened in your theater, but when Hoffman showed up, it did not up, happen in my theater. Eleven people clapping. It was so cool to see Hoffman in there, even for just a brief moment. I also like the post-credit scene because it's not really like a tease for something in the future. It really it's not. It's more of like a tie-up loose end to come. Uh -huh. Sure, does it mean maybe Hoffman could return in the next movie? Maybe, but it didn't come off feeling like it's teasing for loose end. It more felt like, hey, he's here and he's the detective that helped Jigsaw locate all these scammers. And that was another fun thing about Saw X. Since we've seen all the other movies, at least most Saw fans, we know who's been helping Jigsaw at this time. Yes. So there was no point to hide it of him grabbing the research saying, Detective, I need your help with these people. Amanda, come and take nap. And Jigsaw just sitting back going, let me know when these scammers arrive, my friend. <laughs> okay, let's talk about now what they could do with Saw 11. One, I think it's another okay. side story of a previous trap somewhere that we never knew about. I think maybe even specifically between the events of Saw 2 and Saw 3 and 4. Because remember, Saw 3 and 4 happened at the same time. Yeah. Between Saw 2 and 3 and 4, there was a six-month gap. And we know this because Detective Matthews was held captive by Jake Saw, Amanda, and Hoffman for all that time. Which is why he's got a beard and is looking all disheveled and nasty. I want to see, I would like to see that too, a spot between 2 and th two and 3 slash 4 where it talks about Amanda's descent um, and why she thinks people, I think that is what he'll say, personally, I don't know, that's what I would like to see though, personally that's what I'd like to see, I'd like to see a movie where they talk about why Amanda became the way she is for the rest of the series where she doesn't believe in forgiveness where she just makes unwinnable gains where she does all that stuff i want to see something like that for the for like a saw 11 um that takes place between two and three slash four so there's a six month window before john kramer dies and i don't know what he'll say here but that's whoa. enough room for two more movies and make this a nice <laughs> Don't do us like Jigsaw or Spiral where you start up a new story and then you just never continue. So one of my theories is I think Dr. Cecilia is going to want to be back for revenge. She survives the she event. She does survive. Comics, and we saw she is one crazy lady. She's also a rich, powerful crazy lady. You she very me? much is she a rich. She doesn't have the money and the power to go get John Kramer, to go find him, to go after him. John knows she's not rehabilitated. John knows. And I think that right there if dr cecilia comes back could be the way that amanda changes her mindset to where she starts making these unwinnable games if i think he helped he, he's helping my opinion here i think if dr cecilia comes back which i assume she will then that amanda will see that and realize that people don't not everyone changes their ways after 
unless we know they're going to change their ways, they should die. I think that might, I don't know if he'll say that, but personal opinion. No. She's gonna want her revenge. So I yes. think the next film could be Dr. Cecilia coming back in a way and going after John Frame. And I feel like that's the only way to continue this is to bring Tobin Bell back. I feel like it's very much proven that Tobin Bell is just what makes these movies so watchable. Tobin Bell makes the Saw movies so much better. Yes. There we go. But in Saw 2, in Saw 2, though, she is, she is a, she still believes in the same ideals that, ideals? Ideas that Jigsaw believes in, in Saw 2. So I think it has to be in this movie between 2, 3 slash 4. Yes, just like she did it in one, and uh, one, and two. And I know there's going to be so many Saw fans that are getting in the comment section and going, yeah, and then you can bring in Dr. Gordon, and then Logan can be, you know, showing up for the military, maybe he got to leave. I'm like, we got to stop right there. No. The reason Saw X works so good is because it only brings up touches of the lore and other characters. It doesn't bring up everyone. It's so convoluted that it feels only like true Saw fans that have watched all million movies. Yeah, uh, it has to be, it has to be, yes, it can't be, it can't be, have everyone that's ever helped Saw. It can have people that have helped him, it just can't have everyone, because not every audience member or every person that's watched the movie is gonna know all these characters. So, it has to be, like, very specific set of people. Movie becomes too long. Movie's gonna become too long if you keep putting too many traps. I'm ready to roast this one if I have to. No. We have history now. Remember, these events are taking place in like 2004, 2005, in 2024. Carlos would be a fully grown man. Let's just make him the last resort secret apprentice to wrap up this entire freaking ranch. Have him be the apprentice that no. goes after all the other Jigsaw copycats from the guy in Spiral to, you know, maybe Dr. Gordon. If Hoffman is still out there, Ooh, that might, I mean, Logan, have him be the true successor to put all those apprentices into a trap and let's that wouldn't be the hunger. That wouldn't be the dumbest thing I've seen in a horror franchise. However, I don't think it makes sense, seeing as Carlos spends... Every time you see Carlos in Saw 10, he is either playing football or he is riding his bike. I think, I don't think he becomes an apprentice. Pers I, I just don't see it in him. He's too kind of a child to become an apprentice. And Kramer doesn't tell him anything. He doesn't tell him what he does. He doesn't tell him any of this stuff. He just tells the kid, don't pull the lever. <laughs> like and to pull, to pull on the bike wheel. Like, he doesn't tell him anything else. He doesn't tell him what he does. He doesn't tell him his, like, life goal. He doesn't do any of that. He literally just helps him with the bike wheel, which very much strays away from the idea of him becoming an apprentice. I don't think it's out of the realm of ideas for the movie producers to do something like that. I just don't think it would be the best option. But James movie where it's personal opinion once again and have Carlos be the ultimate winner there. Crazy, dumb, stupid, but pay me money cuz I just gave you a great idea, Saw franchise. <laughs> but anyways, guys, that's just my spoiler opinions with everything yep. involving Saw X. I want to know your thoughts on Oh, we might have to watch this. I might have to watch this sometime soon. This but yeah. Um, yeah, that's, Saw 10 was a very, very 
good movie, but also very different from a regular Saw movie. However, I think it plays in the movie's favor, to be honest. It very much gives like a different idea of something that we've never really experienced in a Saw movie before. So I think it's, it's a, it was a very good change of pace for the Saw franchise, and I'm glad they did. But I do still wish that there was some more closure on some things in the movie, but but I'm overall very happy with the movie. Was very happy with the viewing, very happy with everything about the movie. Um, and yeah, um, I can't wait to see if there's another Saw movie. And like I've said, and like he said, and like, oh, I'm, I'm blanking on his name now. Uh, 3C Films said in his video, I hope there's a new one, and I hope it brings Dr. Cecilia back, and it takes place between Saws 2 and 3 slash 4, and talks about Amanda's descent. Like, it, that's, that's one thing that's never really been explained in the Saw franchise, and I'm hoping this next, another movie will do that, because it'll change a lot. It won't change a lot, but it'll definitely tie up loose ends. It'll tie up, like, why did Amanda go from this version of herself in this movie to the version we see in Saws 3 and 4 where she doesn't want people to survive. She just wants people dead. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for this video. <laughs> I know it's a very long video. I'm looking at the timestamp on the OBS recording. Very long. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys later with another video. Take it easy and peace out, everyone.